everybody here with this mic okay? Can you hand this back to me now, just in case? There we go. Good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing? My name is Shanta. Um, I am on record with DevTO as being the first women in, te woman in technology to attend their events. I attended number two. Um, there, at that time, there were six of us. There was the presenter, the four founding members, and me. <laughs> and boy, was it fun. We still had a blast. We still had pizza and beer and all that other stuff. And uh, since then, you can tell it's gotten so much bigger, and I can't believe that it's taken me this long to actually do a talk on this. So, uh, you guys are at how many meetups now? Like three years now? Yeah, 35. Three years, all right. So what I'm going to talk about today is teaching technology and some of the challenges. Most of the talk that I'm going to give you tonight is setting up the stage to actually get you guys involved. I'm an instructor, this is my job, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you what our program is about and what we do at Sheridan, at least for this program anyway, and then I'm gonna ask you guys whether or not we're doing the right thing or not, okay? And I want the feedback, believe me, I want the feedback. So understand the first little bit, maybe a bit dry, and then I'm gonna tell you at least some of the challenges that I think that we're facing. But part of it is you telling me what challenges you guys are facing hiring some people like our own students, okay? So I encourage you to ask those questions as we go through. <coughs> so as I mentioned, the purpose of this talk is to inform the deaf community about how and what we teach our students. This is a two-way conversation. We wish to gather information from the community as to whether or not we're teaching the right stuff. Make sense? Okay, hopefully this will be informative for everybody. So this is me, uh, I'm an instructor at Sheridan College, I teach in the CCIT program in web design and starting next year I'll be teaching the capstone project which I'll get into in just a moment. Uh, I also do a lot of independent IT and social media, well, many of my clients include uh, nonprofit, real estate, those types of things, you can read it all here. Um, and I also have a Bachelor of Commerce degree from Ryerson in information technology management. Just so you know, the people that I'm teaching right now are the biggest competitors for my program. Yeah, so if there's any Ryerson crew in the crowd, you better up your game. Okay. And I apologize for the amount of text on my slides. I haven't quite mastered the art of doing images to text. Remember, I'm used to teaching students who take it and go, well, these are all my study notes. So I apologize, I'm still balancing that. All right, we're gonna hear some fun out of this one. Here are some of the people I teach. <laughs> that is my co-instructor, Dimitar, who just graduated from the CCIT program last month. He's been my TA for the last year and graduated from the program with distinction and uh, has now just has birthday on Thursday and got accepted to his master's program on Saturday. So, let's give him a round of applause for that one. And he had no idea I was putting this in here. Um, but to give you an idea, this is who we teach. We are teaching a joint program with the University of Toronto at Mississauga, okay? So, they come to Sheridan to learn about the fun stuff, is what I call it. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But this is the big piece right here. We are not teaching these guys to be the coders and the devs, okay? So let me make that clear. We are not teaching them with this. We are teaching them to be the translators for the devs and for the coders and so that they know the business side of it so you guys don't have to, okay, for the devs and the crowd. A lot of them go on to do this and we encourage that, but we're not necessarily training them to do so. At Sheridan, we teach them about the principles of design, generally, things like white space, color schemes, that kind of thing. We teach them web design, graphic design, game design, photography and video. And at UTM, they learn about the business and the technical side of things, okay? 
So know that they're getting a well-balanced education at these, at these programs. Now in most cases, there are three courses in each one of those streams I just showed you. What I'm going to talk about today is specifically the web design stream that we teach. So the intro course is the culture of the internet and how it all fits together, okay? Because if we don't understand how this all works, we're not going to understand how to program it to everybody else. And they go, oh my god, this is so boring. We should know this already. We grew up in this age. You did, but not everybody did. Okay? So they need to know who it is that they are marketing to. And they have to also understand their own minds, because a lot of them don't even realize that they're doing half of what they're doing. We teach them basic HTML and CSS. Okay? We assume that we have no prior knowledge of coding. None. So we're building this right from the ground up. In the intermediate class, we get into WordPress. We talk about information architecture. We give them a theme, and we tell them, now you're going to fix it. Right? How many of you know that this is what a lot of your job is going to be as a coder? Fixing other people's code. <laughs> See? There you go. And then, in some cases, what we're going to do is we're going to give them a theme, and so you've got to use this theme, and now you've got to modify it, and then use the information architecture. So what goes where? How many things do you need to have on a page? How many do you not? How many things in a menu? To make it organized, that people can find this stuff. Okay? And that's what we call the document machine. We've also just introduced in this particular course a little bit of PHP so that they can start to understand where it's going for the next course. The advanced class. This semester we are teaching them widgets, themes, and WordPress plugins. So they have to build their own widget, build their own plugin, and build their own theme using the underscores framework. Our hope here is that we are putting them in a position that even before they have left or graduated the college, they have something that they can use to even get a small gig here and there. They can start to learn, and they have at least learned an appreciation for all you coders and devs out there. They now know how difficult you guys work and how much you guys work to get the job done right. Okay? Networking. All right. <laughs> These guys don't know this yet. How many of you here are in my 460 class? Stand up. Yes, I'm going to embarrass the hell out of each and every single one of you. Okay, each one of these guys here has a 10% assignment to attend a networking event. Okay? They had to attend a networking event, and they had to bring me three business cards of people that they met that I can call. And guess what? I know almost everybody in the room, <laughs> okay? And in addition, if they found me, they got bonus marks. So well done, you've all got bonus marks. But here's the trick. All you guys are going to grill them as much as you want. Be my guest, okay? <laughs> Have a seat, guys. Thank you. <laughs> we made it up. Well done. But here's the reason that we're teaching them this, okay? Whether they are web designers, whether they are graphic designers, no matter what they are going to do, you guys all see the value in this, right? Going out and knowing how to shake somebody's hand. The biggest complaint that I had from any of the meetups that I went to is that the new grads that were coming out, or the students, had no idea about this stuff. They graduate and they don't even know that they have to have a business card, or a LinkedIn profile, or how to shake somebody's hand. We teach them that before they've even left the college. And as you can see, we make sure that they do. <laughs> now, we are going through changes every time in this particular course, okay? And I'm going to talk about those in just a moment. This course, we adapt, okay? In the winter of 2013, we put them with real live clients, okay? In the summer of 2013, we did mobile app design. In winter of 2014, we put in more coding and we made sure that they got on GitHub. Okay, so the 260 and the 360 have been pretty much the same thing. But depending on what feedback we're getting from both the students as well as the community, we're saying, okay, we've got to change this, we've got to change this, we've got to change this. And this semester, of course, 
We're doing more WordPress, okay? WordPress isn't going away anytime soon. We're powering, what, 22% of the world's websites? So we're giving them real stuff that they can use and places that they can learn from, which is the big ticket. So now we're gonna talk about the challenges. So why are they going to come to us if they can learn to code on their own? From some of the more experienced, either recruiters in the room or whoever does the hiring, how many of you look for a degree on their resumes? Two, three. Okay, how many of you put them through a test and say, can you code, can you do this stuff? Hands high. Okay, so there's, the, there's our answer. Okay, so that is one of the challenges that the brick and mortar degree granting type schools are facing. Can you do this? That's what we're trying to adapt to. The problem is, is that as much as we want to adapt to it, the amount of time that it takes us to turn this stuff around, we can't compete with the, the hacking schools that are around and everything else. We still have to conform to certain rules. So it's a challenge. How we're going to overcome it, I'm not entirely sure. So one of the things that we did with the 460 that I taught back in the winter of 2013, when we paired them with that real client, we saw the value. Okay? The beauty about that is we did not make it go away. What we did is we introduced more coding and we made a new course. That was in the winter of 2013. We proposed it. It got approved, pre-approval in the fall. It's now gotten approval, final. Guess when the first time we can offer it? Winter of 2015. You see the issue here. So this is one of the biggest challenges that we are facing. We can alter the courses that we already have, as, which is what we're doing with this 461. We're testing this out. Does it work? Does it not work? What do we need to fix? But when it comes to creating a new course, and keeping up with the technology, which you guys all know, changes so rapidly that it's going to blow your minds. So this is going to become one of the biggest challenges, or these are two of the biggest ones, especially when we have to, we have to compete with this. Our hope is that what we are teaching our students, and I think, and this is where the, some of the questions are going to come up in just a moment, our hope is that we are teaching them how to learn. Okay? Go on to GitHub, go on to WordPress, go on to the Codex, go and learn it for yourselves. And hopefully with those kinds of resources, with that, okay, now I know I gotta go here, or how does this work, and so on, that they will be able to find out anything that they need. And of course, learning and teaching has changed. So right now, I've attended three word camps. One of the things I forgot to mention, um, I left for Milwaukee on Thursday, and I haven't been home yet. <laughs> my flight got rerouted. I know all my students have heard this today. My flight got rerouted, and instead of flying back into Buffalo to get my car, I actually ended up coming back into Toronto, and I don't have my keys, so I have to stay at my dad's house. I have to go back into Buffalo tomorrow morning to get my car. So <laughs> it's been a bit of a ride. Um, I'm also gonna be speaking in uh, in New York on Thursday, going into back into New York on Thursday to be one there. The whole point of this, and going to LA, excuse me, in September, the whole point of this is none of the other instructors are doing this. Why? If our students have to learn the stuff that's up to date, can they afford to do one networking or one seminar thing a year? Not if they're going to keep up to date. How are we presenting ourselves as experts, as instructors? In the WordPress world that I mainly deal in, we go to WordCamps and we say, this is what we know, this is how we do it. And we learn from our peers. And then we bring that back to the classroom. The widget assignment that these guys are learning right now, I actually saw in Chicago last month. And I called them up and I said, yo, I saw you like, are asking for donations on your website for a coffee. I'll tell you what, I'll buy you lunch a really nice lunch, and you'll let me use your code. And I know he would have let me anyway. But here's the thing, he taught an entire room how to do this. If WordPress sees him as an expert, why shouldn't we? Teach from the experts. I can't teach them everything. No one knows that much stuff, especially with the web the way it is. So give them the knowledge from those who already know. 
And the exposure of us experts, we draw students, it's, it's a marketing function. And of course, it brings the most up-to-date knowledge back and into the community. Thank you. Okay, so I'd also like to welcome some feedback. I know I really didn't cover all the challenges, but those challenges alone are pretty big. So if there's any other challenges that you think I've missed, or if there's questions that you guys want to ask me, then I'd love to hear it. How young do you think a student can be to start learning something like high school? So for the benefit of the video, how young can a person be to start learning this stuff? If I'm using myself as an example, I started learning basic programming in when I was 11. Yeah. Right? How many of you were like 10 to 15? There's your answer. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Ryan. Yeah, just feedback. Yeah, I mean, I, I went through software engineering McMaster, and you can easily see, you know, the, the, you know, the separation between um, you know, what you're learning there and what you're actually, you know, nothing really that I learned there. Mm -hmm. you know, the good programmers that I know learn really most of what they know from, you know, working mm -hmm. on their own stuff and learning on their own. They could teach you how to learn, but right. so that's pretty true. And, and just a bit of foreshadowing, this is a really interesting thing. So I started um, with my network administration of Webmaster Diploma. And um, then I went on to do, and I actually got called back about six months later to start teaching. So I've also been doing teaching for quite some time. I kid you not, and I've got a witness to this. I was on my way here, and I always spoke about my old professor. I was literally on my way here. And my mentor from that school who taught me IP addressing, network administration, router configuration, my first HTML code, I met five minutes from this building. On my way here, I kid you not. I said, you're not gonna believe this. And he goes, what are you doing, teaching? He's like, how did I guess, right? And that was a long time ago. <laughs> Yes, in the back. I think you're missing out a lot of better, better students. If you had um, some put back the basics on basic HTML and CSS, if you assume they already know that and take them to the next level and want them to share it, you can offer a much better value to share it. Okay. So, you know, heads up to high school and tell them, hey, look, your students need to know this basic stuff before they come. Fair enough. So let me take that onto the floor then. How many of you learned HTML and CSS in high school? Okay, hands down. How many of my guys learned HTML and CSS in high school? There's your answer. That's one of the reasons we assume that they know nothing. You have to remember, their degree, their degree is actually in a Bachelor of Arts, right? They are not meant to be the computer science guys. Even when I was going through Ryerson, I had one course, and I still never learned CSS. By the way, I had to learn CSS when I took over these courses. Okay, because when I learned HTML in the first bit, CSS didn't exist. When I got through my degree, they never taught me CSS. So I'm teaching them what I had to learn myself. Down here in the front. Um, I probably overlooked it, but um, I didn't see JavaScript in your course. JavaScript. Yes. Okay. You're right. It's not in there as of this moment. If they want to learn it as part of their final assignments, because by the way, the industries that we give them as part of 460, they have to hand us a final assignment. Some of that plugin may involve JavaScript. We'll help them along. But there's only so much we can teach them in three courses. And believe me, how like the number of them that PHP, PHP blew their minds in just 360, we said we're not going to throw too many languages at them. With PHP, they can get through WordPress, which is what we wanted to, to at least get them to, so that they can get something that they can leave and hit the ground running. If they want to go learn JavaScript, they can go probably learn it on their own now. Question over here. You went through any state, but like the bureaucracy of the education system. The brick and mortar. To improve the brick and mortar, exactly. Uh, this, to me, it seems like the other side of the coin to a story that I read about some of the hacking academies here who are trying to teach courses without being certified, and then the government comes in and says, well, you can't do that because you're not certified. Do you think this is two sides of the same coin, and is this something that the tech community can't afford to have this happen in terms of progress here? So let me take that in two slices. So the first part of it is 
you know, brick and mortars, they're taking too much time, is it, you know, more red tape than what we need? And on the flip side, you've got the hacking schools that are getting shut down by the government because they're not allowed to certify and all that other stuff. I think it is two sides of the same coin. Um, but it's a matter of balance, right? Um, and it depends. I mean, ultimately, if the hacking schools, in my humble opinion, if the hacking schools are putting through what the people need to learn to get the jobs, good on them. My concern, and this was even my concern when I went through my own diploma, is that it assumed that we had the fundamentals of programming. And the number of people that could not wrap their heads around just the basic logic. And I screamed at my own old faculty, and I said, what the hell are you doing to our courses? You're now devaluing my degree by not teaching the program. By the way, Ryerson's taking it out. Believe me, I'm, yeah, I'm not happy. And that's why I went in and I did a course on teaching them HTML and CSS to women in tech. Um, yeah. So it's, it is a double-edged sword. What the answer is, I don't know. Balance, like you said, I think it's a balance. But again, it, it becomes, if, if that's what the brick and mortar has to do to get through the government, and the government's shutting down the other pieces to say, no, you're not certified, maybe the answer is the government. At the back here. So you're basically saying that we're teaching them a little bit of everything and then they are expected to be able to do everything when they get into these jobs. Or people are hiring, that's your fear. And that the people that are hiring these people are not paying enough money for maybe what they're worth. So let me, let me answer. I'm just, I'm just concerned about, my, my concern is that you're putting them into that box. Okay. First thing I tell my students, you want to become a programmer, go become a programmer. I'll get you started. That is the point of this program, in my humble opinion, is we give them a taste of everything, okay? If they want to go out of this and they want to go on to do more coding, great. We've at least exposed them to enough to get that start. And most of the guys that we, that we teach end up in one of those streams. They don't necessarily end up in those you know, sort of all across jack of all trades or Joe of all trades. They become a web designer, they become a graphic designer, photography. Mo many of our guys in our programs for, for film have actually won huge numbers of awards because they knew that's what they wanted to do. And they choose a stream depending on, on what it is their interests are. So, yes, we're exposing them to a lot, but I always tell them be a specialist in what you do. And I hope that that's exactly what they do. And I think we're, we have to move on. I will happily take those afterwards. Shanta's here all night. Yes, yes, I will be here all night. Continue this debate. Thank you, Shanta. Thank you.